All right, welcome back to Born Reviews. Nick here. Jody there. And we are excited. Of course we are. We got the hat on for some Mickey Flanagan. Jody, which one are we checking out today? Dealing with loads of heckles. Oh. What's a heckle? Heckle. Oh, it's like that one Jimmy Carr that we watch. Oh, jeez. Can you just give people a hard time back and forth? I like to give people a hard time, but I'm not always quick-witted with the response, except for more and more I've been learning that, like, in my head there's a lot of quick responses, and sometimes, like, I forget that I'm not saying it in my head and I say it out loud. Filter. In the classroom sometimes, I'm like, whoop! <laughs> it, it's tough that way, but that's sometimes, because you... You want to have a good rapport with your students, but you also got to control what you say. Um, so, love when the comedians deal with the heckles. I consider the comment section, the rude comments are different than heckles because this is like in person right there. You have the oh guts to gosh. say, and I get it. A lot of these comedians, they welcome it. Yeah. I'm assuming Mickey Flanagan is no different. Jimmy Carr really welcomes it. He has a whole like segment on his show, but I'm excited to see these. I'm just a little nervous because I'm afraid that what they're gonna have right here, since it's only four minutes, might be like a compilation of ones we've already seen from previous videos. It does say compilation. So yeah, like, cause there was that one where he had like, he had messed it up and he kind of like was goofing around with the audience and saying it was your fault I messed it up. Yep. Or maybe they had said something to mess him up. So we'll find out either way. Love ourselves to Mickey Flanagan. If you like Mickey Flanagan, we have so many videos on our channel. Reactions, I should say, of his comedy. But if you like this reaction, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can be aware of our next uploaded video. All right. Headphones are on. We are ready. Here we go. Now, I'm from the UK, and we do a few things properly in the UK. <laughs> Skiving. Yes, madam, I'm sure you do. <laughs> People's DVDs being one of them. Yeah. <laughs> no. Sorry, here. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. You're just joining in, but it's, it's, it's only cost about a quarter of a million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> we do everything well, madam, don't we? What do you do really well? Because we're all dying to know. <laughs> According to your boyfriend, not a lot. Your, hu your husband? Oh, well done. <laughs> He's sitting there like that, the old man, I think. <laughs> it's like he's been here a million times before. <laughs> <laughs> it was like this when she told Barry Manilow he had a big nose. <laughs> Very awesome. Close. Don't worry about me picking on you. I'm not even you with your granddad top on there. There you go. <laughs> Have you got a canal boat? <laughs> not you. I ain't got a wonky eye. I'm talking to him. <laughs> I'll get him all full of himself. Me? Me? You talking to me? <laughs> you, you all right? You look a bit upside. You look like you're about to shit and stamp in it. <laughs> Someone upset you. She dug you out on the way here. You're not fucking wearing that, are you? Like you're in the fucking S and M. <laughs> You've got a tattoo. Oh, Can you mind if I look at see your tattoo just very quickly? Tattoo. You've just gone for the one arm. I thought he was saying toe. You're not going to balance it up because it's, it's it's irritating me a little bit to be honest. What does he need? If you if you'd have come a little way down each arm, I could see that. But just to do the one, you're a bit out of whack. <laughs> Is it for interviews, like, you sort of going like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like insurance. It's all I've ever wanted to do. <laughs> when you go down the pub. <laughs> Been to Thailand, <laughs> fucking <laughs> What are you up to this year? You doing anything? No. No? You going away anywhere? No. No? no. Nothing? No. I'm not a big fan of travelling. It's not my thing. I'm not really keen on it. I mean, the city break. Does it exist, the city break? Is it a real thing, the city break? You leave the city where you know where things are, how much things cost, what's city. going on, and you go to a city where you have none of this information. <laughs> it's supposed to be a break. <laughs> I went to Prague last year with a wife. She said, after two days, are you enjoying yourself? I said, yeah. Impressive. I've just paid 15 quid for two coffees. <laughs> <laughs> 
but never mind, at least I've got that bridge to walk over again. <laughs> to get to the old town. <sighs> it's been very, very nice. Yes, proper. <laughs> Keep your drugs in your pocket for the next hour. <laughs> I know it's a bit sunny out there and you're all, oh, I'll go and see Mickey Manning and I'll call it on after. <laughs> oh, bollocks. That's classic. You out. <laughs> so nicely, we got the first one out of the way, which we had seen yes, before. Yes. But then we were able to get some fresh stuff. I'm excited to be able to see those in future, if there are any of ones that we haven't checked out, clips. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting because I wonder if these comedians, besides ones that welcome on every single show, if they have like five or six comebacks ready to go, like, or they're just so quick-witted that they're just, boom, able to bust it out. But that one where he's like, leave your drugs in your, your drugs in your pocket for the next hour, please. that's a classic one. Yeah. That's a great response. Well, and... The first lady, I definitely think that he just did that on the spot because you could tell, like, he kept going back to it. Like, he's like, no, wait, this is still bothering me. Let's yeah. talk about this. So I definitely think that was definitely an on-the-spot reaction. I'm sure all of them were. I think, too, it would be kind of annoying if you have your set and you're, like, in the middle of trying to set oh, your story up. Crazy. And people are shouting out. It's like, dude, shut up. Let me tell my joke. Like, but, yeah. So I think it's, like, if you're asking for shout-outs, shout-out. But if you're just shouting out when everybody else is quiet... I'm sure that would be very, very frustrating. Annoying. Well, and the one that wasn't on here, where he's in the middle of the joke, and then someone sh shouts out, or they did something to distract him, and then he's like, oh, crap, you messed me up. And he started from the very beginning. Yes, yes. I never realized, like, they wrote the sets like that, almost, not word for word, but almost word for word, because it gets them kind of in a rhythm. They know where they're yes. going with it. They know not to say too much. I never thought about that before, but it makes sense that you want to keep it concise. You want to keep it just this. Let's have it written down. Let's kind of memorize it a little bit so I know where to go or maybe some keywords. I thought that was pretty cool. Well, that, and then, like, when you interrupt it, now we kind of forget what the lead-up was. Yeah. Especially if it's a quicker joke. So you kind of have to re-say it just to help keep us on track of what was the punchline. Yeah, to get the punchline, exactly. Because, yeah. But that would drive me... I, she'll tell you I hate being interrupted. I, I do. It's probably a pride thing. I have no idea. But I just... I absolutely hate it. And so that would drive me nuts. So I love his response where he's like, it's okay, we're just filming a DVD here. And that made me think of teaching in a small way, like when you know you're going to be observed by your boss yes. or by other people. Not that it should change anything because you're not trying to get away with someone and they show up like, oh man, let me do my job now. But there's like 50 different things they're looking for and you want to, okay, can I make sure I can get mm -hmm. all these done? And a veteran teacher can, but you still like question yourself. So I wonder if, like, when you're recording that DVD and you know what's going to be out yes, there and the way you, you deliver, it to be nice. that's mm -hmm. got to be stressful. I'm sure, and I'm sure that's probably why he, like, kept going back, like, oh, you freaking messed it up. Yeah. But, no, for sure. And you're right. Whenever you do kind of feel like you're on the spot whenever anybody, I do at least, whenever anybody walks in my room, I'm always like, why are you here? Go away. Because oh I gosh. feel, like, anxiety and I'm like, oh. But, yeah. and I always feel like, you notice things more too. Like the students off task, you're like, man, get back on task, get back on task. Come on, get back on task. And you're just sitting there like, I am going to destroy you, you yes. when they leave. Yes. And you give them those eyes. Yes, and you're like, you never do this. Why are you doing this now? Or sometimes they'll do it. I've learned though, sometimes students want to show off when admin comes in. And so they'll be like wanting to talk extra, but they're so excited. They're like not raising their hand and they're just shouting out. And I'm like, no, no, no. Luckily, that's few and far between. Like, honestly, it's surprising, but kids are usually on their best behavior. They really are. When they know, and maybe they don't fully know depending on how young they are, but when they know you're being watched, for whatever reason, they're on their best behavior, so that's nice. But yeah. he's always on his best behavior because he's got the best jokes. If you like our reaction to Mickey Flynn, again, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time. Goodbye.